Interesting year politically with the Missouri General Assembly up for grabs, Democrats hoping to, re, to regain control, and a lot of it is all going to depend on where the money comes from to politicians and candidates and where they're giving money to other political entities. Randy Turner, a blogger, author, editor, writer, educator from Joplin, you do a lot of things, don't you? Yeah, you didn't even mention I sing with a 50s and 60s uh, rock group, too. Very poorly, I might add. Well, that, that's excellent. <laughs> if the, um, the influence of money in Missouri politics. Roy Blunt, the incumbent congressman, is sitting on about a million two right now in cash, mm -hmm. excluding his political action committee. The Democrats finally got to a candidate, I noticed on your blog, Ron Lapham. Yes. Yes, he is a perennial candidate, and that's not saying anything bad about him. There's a lot of people who have uh, done a lot of good who have run over and over again for offices, but he has not, uh, he's not fared very well in the past. He ran uh, as a Reform Party candidate in 2000, uh, and then uh, switched to the Democratic Party, and uh, this will mark the third consecutive uh, election cycle that he has filed on the Democratic ticket for 7th District. And do you anticipate seeing any marquee Democrat filing for that job? I would be surprised. We still have uh, was a week from tomorrow, I think it yeah, is. The draft Kreider movement is out there. Doug Harpool has been uh, floated as a potential candidate. Anybody from Joplin? I have not heard anybody even talking. Of course, uh, you know, you have to get out with a microscope sometimes just to find a, a Democrat in the in the Joplin area. But, no, I, I, there's not been any talk about uh, about this. And it's, you know, it's the same thing with the candidates down there. You'll, you'll hear Democrats saying, well, I'll never vote for that guy. And you'll even hear Republicans saying uh, that I'll never vote for Roy Blunt again or I'll never vote for Senator Nodler down there again. But... Uh, they're not going to have anybody run against them from within their own party. They're not going to have anybody run against them with the Democrats, so they're going to be back. Why aren't stories like this in the mainstream media? That's sort of to and fro of the dismal chances for Democrats in the 7th District. Uh, why, why aren't we seeing more political coverage and analysis in mainstream media? I think because it is a little more difficult for some of the people to, to do, and you don't have the experienced reporters that you used to have. You've got, and I don't know what the deal is with the, with the news leader here, but I know that at the Joplin Globe, uh, we have had experienced reporters who were, uh, you know, bought out by the company when they uh, grew to an age where they were making too much money and they wanted to make some cuts, and you lose that institutional memory that they have there. Plus, it's always been a case of, I don't think they dig into the money enough. There are too many people who say, well, that's just the way it, it, it operates. That's the way it is. But if they don't dig into the money, who will? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, outside of bloggers like you. Yeah, and as far as I can see, there aren't too many of those. I wish a whole group of them would start up across the state. And I'm not talking about that as a, as a Democratic Party thing. I guarantee you that if people look into uh, some of the Democrats across the state, they are going to see uh, some problems, too. I've written about uh, Senator Coleman from the St. Louis area who was considering running for state auditor even though she had filed for bankruptcy earlier. You know, this is the person I want watching my money. And she's accepted over $3,000 worth of gifts from lobbyists. There are, you know, I don't know that I necessarily call it corruption. But we have a system that really has tarred both sides. And right now, I'm writing a lot more about the Republicans because uh, that's who's in power. Well, and that's power. all we have down here. And for they're the in power time. everywhere. Absolutely. Uh, both on the state and national level. National level, level and, and apparently a lot of the practices, if you really wish to get legislation or an audience with top Republican leaders, you need to be a, a donor. Mm -hmm. You need to play the game. So that's why you don't see a lot of Democrats there. Well, you have that... Uh, Oh, just a few weeks ago, I was writing about this health task force that uh, was appointed by uh, Governor Blunt, and I think there were 12 people appointed to it, and at least 10 of those had uh, all kinds of contributions to the governor's campaign. Now, I'm not saying that some of these people, and maybe all of them, are not people who are worthy of serving on that kind of committee, but I'm sure that there are people who didn't donate to Governor Blunt's campaign, even... You know, if he might even appoint a Democrat of all things to there. And, God forbid. Yeah. And 
get some varying viewpoints. If you if you get all people who donated to the same candidates and have the same political points of view, uh, you might get hit out of from left field by something that you don't see coming. But if you control all the levers of power, then you can't lose. You can't lose. When or will the mainstream media ever get to a point where it says, wait a minute, you know, uh, Good Night and Good Luck is just now out on DVD. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are noting the mirrored circumstances of a cowed media from the 1950s and finally somebody mm -hmm. stepping forward in, in the form of Edward Murrow. Is that going to happen in, in uh, this decade? I don't anticipate it. Why not? I, I think a lot of it is just the, what, the way the media is set up these days, the business end of it. You take a look at the Kansas City Star getting and Knight Ritter being sold. Now, supposedly that's not going to have a major effect because the company that bought it is a newspaper company. But you see the, the emphasis being put on what's good for the stockholders rather than what's good for the readers. Now, of course, I always believe that if the readers liked what they were reading, uh, they buy the paper, they buy the products from the advertisers, and it would work out. But there's more of an emphasis on cutting rather than doing anything else. And in uh, in our local market, and in Springfield too, you have the the uh, the next star stations uh, over here. It's KOLR and KSFX, Channel and they have uh, they have uh, gotten rid of their AP. I mean, they. Uh, now I'm not saying. Sometimes I always thought you should kind of forget about the AP and go out and do some actual digging, but this is more of a let's save some money in the news department thing. And then both at the newspapers and TV now, we are getting young, inexperienced people. I mean, that's the way it's always been, but I think even more so now. They want to make their score here, move on somewhere else, and when you don't have veteran reporters who know where to look, who know how to dig up things, uh, Nothing's going to get uh, unearthed. Is it also, though, on the audience? Because well, we're not seeing a huge hue and cry from readers of daily papers or viewers of television Absolutely. to say, hey, we want more of this coverage. Yeah, uh, and I don't know what, uh, is it because they're not, they've just stopped reading it in a lot There's of cases. That point. Because, uh, you know, newspaper circulation has, has gone down. And I think it's gone down in direct correlation to the dumbing down of the papers. It started probably with U.S. Today and USA Today. And now USA Today has kind of beefed up its coverage. Well, it was but also, everyone else is going where they were. It was also Gannett um, saying that spinach journalism, giving people what they need, mm -hmm. really should be superseded by giving people what they want. Mm -hmm. and so if you give readers and viewers what they want, do they really just want more Brad Pitt coverage? Well, apparently the editors think so. I know at the Joplin Globe we had a situation where there were a couple of major stories that went on in the community one day, but on the front page there was a story about the uh, Janet Jackson uh, fiasco at the Super Bowl, and it was not about the story right after it happened. It was a story about an FCC investigation months after it happened. And they used that as an, as an opportunity to run that uh, uh, blurry picture again. At least that's how it looked in that newspaper. To get more people to read. Yeah. And I just don't believe people buy the Joplin Globe or the Springfield News Leader to read about Michael Jackson or Janet Jackson or Britney Spears or anybody like that. People want to read about their government. They want to read about their schools. And the editors are going by too much what focus groups say and and not just putting news in there. I think if they if they went out and they uncovered things, people would come back and read. And I don't mean you have to be all negative. There's a lot of good things you can uncover if you go out and you're just looking for news. But if all you're doing is seeing what happened somewhere else or what some other newspaper did a series on and, and say, hey, it's time for a meth series or something like that, if you're not going out and digging for the stories, you're not going to find them. We've got a couple of minutes left. In lieu of a real reform in mainstream media, most people say there's going to be a continued rise of the bloggers, especially ones like you who focus on reporting and ferreting out stories the mainstream media don't cover. Your suggestions for people who want to do that? Well, the first thing you have to do is you obviously have to be able to build up a readership, and to do that, you have to you have to write on a regular basis. But if you don't know what you're talking about, 
you're going to be tuned out very quickly. So I would suggest that if people are interested in writing about government, get out and uh, get out and attend the meetings and write about it. Because they are public. Absolutely. And there's so much public records that are available on the Internet that what I'm doing now would not have been possible uh, during all the years I was in newspapers. Uh, it, it was difficult to get that stuff. Now, get behind a computer, you can find what it took months to get earlier. Uh, to be young and dark-haired and reporters again. <laughs> Just to be young and have hair again. That would be nice. Randy Turner, pleasure to talk with you. Thank you.